Hi, Scott. You know, it was a, an incredible privilege for me to uh, pilot two shuttle flights, command a third. At the same time, uh, over the course of that uh, nine years in the astronaut corps, I recognize that just by the very nature of being a government organization, things sometimes more, move more slowly. It's more difficult to get things accomplished. It's just the nature of the beast. It's no secret that when the space race ended, the competitive edge went dull, and the government reverted to business as usual, never recapturing the space program's early momentum. How to restore it? Maybe the answer is to go back 100 years to the beginning of the airline industry. It's hard to imagine that the friendly skies started with a dare of sorts, a small contest with a large cash prize. Raymond Ortigue, a French hotel owner, so admired the pilots of World War I that in 1919, he offered $25,000. In today's money, that's like $1 million to the first flyboy who could make a nonstop flight across the Atlantic Ocean. At first, there were no entrants. No one had the combination of technology, guts, and game until 1927, when American Charles Lindbergh signed up for the challenge. New York to Paris nonstop, he said. If airplanes could do it, there's no limit to the future of aviation. And even speculated that transoceanic flights could someday even turn a profit. So he took off, flying alone over the cold black ocean in a plane so small and cockpit so cramped that he had to use a mirror to see out the window. There was no way of communicating, so tension was high on both sides of the Atlantic until his plane, the Spirit of St. Louis, touched down in Paris, 33 hours later, and the world collectively cheered the daring feat. A new era of aviation had begun, and a new industry born, one that has pumped billions into the economy by making it possible to affordably fly anywhere while eating, sleeping, and watching movies. If a cash prize was critical in the development of the airline industry, perhaps a similar prize could launch a space travel industry. That was the thinking of Peter Diamandis. Like myself and millions of kids in the 1960s, he grew up watching the Gemini and Apollo programs and became fascinated with space travel. But by the 1980s and 1990s, he thought we could be doing so much more. Inspired by the Ortigue and Lindbergh story, he created the Ansari X Prize. My name is Anusha Ansari, and I've been fascinated and fixated on space all my life. I was inspired by the vision of Dr. Peter Diamandis. He wanted to revolutionize personal space flight industry, and I believed in that mission. So my family and I decided to join him in this revolution and we became the title sponsors of the Ansari X Prize. It offered a $10 million award to the first private team that launched a manned craft with a three-person capacity 100 kilometers into space. Not once, but twice within two weeks to prove its reliability. They were 26 teams from seven different nations that competed. As you can see, the designs are unconventional. Could one of these teams, with no government help or resources, actually solve problems of affordable space flight that the $100 billion spent on the space shuttle had failed to solve? Why would anyone expect solutions from them? And then again, why not? Nine years ago, I first read about this thing called the X Prize, and I read about it in uh, Space News or one of the publications in the industry, and I virtually laughed to myself, yeah, that'll happen in my lifetime. Well, as it ended up just a few years later, after I left government service, had the opportunity to get connected with the X Prize, eventually became the chief judge for the X Prize competition. I was out on the desert in uh, Mojave, California, on uh, October 4th of, of 2004 with about 10,000 other people. Now these were the faithful, the people that just absolutely love space and, and are excited about something moving forward in the private sector and saw the incredible possibilities. As the chief judge for the venture, I was um, responsible along with my team to verify the requirements so that 50 years from now, 
they could look back at the historical record and see that, yes, this historical event actually did happen. As with all prizes, there can only be one winner, and the winner of the Ansari X Prize was White Knight and Spaceship One. White Knight carries Spaceship One under its belly and flies it to the height of about 50,000 feet. That's when Spaceship One fires up its rockets, which carries it over the limits. Holy crap, that was close. 62 and a half miles. Its re-entry to Earth was inspired by the simple science of a badminton birdie, of all things, like a feather whirling down to Earth. It was beautiful. We could see on the jumbotrons and we saw Spaceship One glide down and land safely 